Cooking with Frankie Meeple. Today, we're going to talk about family traditions. You know me, I love family, and I even asked you guys to email me your family tradition. Well, it wasn't long ago, around Easter, I saw a beautiful family tradition, and I asked them to come on Frankie Meeple and share their tradition. And they're going to make an Easter pie in July on Cooking with Frankie Meeple. What's up everybody? Jessica Paulson here, aka Sprinkles, from season 14 of Worst Cooks in America on Food Network. Hey, this is Johnny E from Philly Rock Radio. Hi, it's Caitlin from season 15 of Food Network's Worst Cooks in America, and you are now cooking with Frankie Meatball. traditions. Long after you're gone, your, your grandkids, of your grandkids, of your grandkids, if you start a tradition, they're always going to remember you. So pretty much it's another way of immortality. You know what I'm saying? And you create something good and you got to share with the family. You know what I'm saying? I have here Joe and Gina Matarazzo that's going to share with you a beautiful, amazing Tradition. Frankie, thanks, thanks for inviting for, us. Thanks for coming. Um, Guys, yeah. they came all the way from Mount Pocono, PA. But they're from Brooklyn. we, we got to make sure we get that Brooklyn in here. They just <laughs> live in the Poconos. That's right. Like, I live in Jersey, but I'm from Philly. I'm from South Philly. You know what I'm saying? You take the guy out of South Philly, but you can't take the South Philly out of the guy. Unless you hit him with a baseball bat. That's another story. <laughs> I'm searching on Instagram. And I saw your pie, and I read your story on Instagram, and I thought it was amazing. And I'm glad you guys are here to share with everybody else family traditions. And to me, family traditions mean a lot, just like family, if they're not crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we all got those uh, Yeah, we all crazies. got crazies in our family. <laughs> I believe every family is dysfunctional, but it's what degree are they? <laughs> tradition started. Who was the first one to make the Easter pie, which is called the Pizza Rustica? Pizza Rustica, or some people call it just Easter pie, Easter pizza. Well, this, um, I guess it's like was something common among like uh, the immigrants from Italy, or from, you know, from southern Italy. And as, as my mother told me, you know, like well, way back in the day when like during Lent, when you couldn't eat meat, you couldn't eat meat for the full 40 days. This was like celebrating the end of Lent. So, you know, it was a pie with, uh, well, the way her mother made it was eggs, provolone cheese, and pepperoni. And, you know, all the families, you know, they have, they have like different uh, combinations of things. Like my father's mother used to make it with uh, prosciutto, pepperoni, sapasad, uh, gabagol, or some people call it ham cappy. <laughs> yeah, capicola. That's right. Pretty much the combinations are endless. You know? Right. Why don't you yeah. keep it Italian? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't want to put locks in there, you know? <laughs> that won't be too Italian. It'll be yeah. like my kids, half and half. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. But for like years, we, we've been following my mother's mother's recipe, which is like pepperoni, eggs, cheese, provolone cheese. Uh, my mother will probably roll over in her grave if she knew. Uh, we've made a few with sausage in it too. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like a, you know very very simple. It's uh, grandma's uh, grandma's recipe. And she and, brought it over from Italy. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And remember, like as a kid growing up, like on Good Friday, we'd be at her house. And my mother, her four sisters were there, and they're chopping the pepperoni, the cheese, mixing the eggs. Uh, like the night before, one of my uncles came and he made the dough, because he had to make a lot of dough, because, uh, well, Grandma had 11 kids, so... Every... Well, he needs a lot of money to support 11 kids, you know yeah. what I mean? That's why he had to make a lot of dough. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so she had to make a lot of pies, and and that's what it was. That's what Good Friday was. Like uh, grandma and the, you know, my mother or the, you know, the four aunts all making those pies, and then you know, taking them out of the oven. I remember like she'd have cardboard on the dining room table, and they, you know, set them on the cardboard to cool. And then, like, uh, the next day, you had to come pick up your pie. But, but you know... So she you made it for the whole family? Yes. And then some. I don't think my family would do that. They'd be like, you want it? You make it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the difference between New York and Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's right. And then when you, you, you got that pie and you, you, you couldn't eat it till uh, noon on Saturday, the day after, because then Lent was officially over. All the meat in it had to come from a, you know, a pig. So I guess the idea of, well, we suffered through Lent, now we can pig out. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Is Gina the one that makes the pies now? Or you uh, both still do it together? Yeah, we still, she rolls the dough, I do all the cutting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Family traditions, okay, guys? You heard the story. Now it's time to see the magic. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to do something I never did before. I'm actually going to step out of the way, turn the show over to these two guys, and they're going to Frankie Meeple it up for you. I'll be back, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to taste it. But for now, I'm out of here, guys. I'm leaving it to these guys. They're going to teach you how to make their family tradition. Take it over, guys. Okay, thanks, Frankie. All right, you're the... The roller. You're the dough roller, so... Uh... Oh. We got a lot of dough. Yeah, we throw a little flour out there on the table so it doesn't stick. You're making a sand castle? I am. <laughs> so I can't go to the beach this year. <laughs> make it here. We're looking for about a pound or a little more of dough right now. We're at home and we roll the dough. We use my mom's mother's rolling pin which has been in the family for like years so it's tradition it's all all over so we're going to roll out the dough to an eighth of an inch so you yeah. want to get it really flat yes yeah, it's about a pound of dough rolling dough is definitely a way to get your cardio in definitely you don't sound like excited about cardio <laughs> no i'm not excited about cardio <laughs> okay. and, uh, yeah, my grandmother. Well, she didn't. Ha she didn't have a rolling pin. She just had like a. She had a dowel about like those, that wide and about this long, and that that was the rolling pin. I remember, but she did have a big wooden tabletop. It was like about five by five, and we'd, we'd lay that on the kitchen table so she could like, you know, roll out the dough. You see, look at this. We have like a 12-inch pan. And that looks like it's rolled out enough. Put a little bit of olive oil gonna, in the pan. We're going to put a little olive oil into the pan and brush it around. Mm -hmm. You want the pie to not stick in the pan. If you don't like olive oil, you can use Crisco. You can, you can use a little bit of Crisco. It's just you don't you just don't want the pie sticking to the pan. Then what good is it? If you can't get it out of the pan, you can't eat it. This is always the hardest part, getting the the dough inside the pan. So a hole on the side would be, it would be okay, it would be doable. But if you got a hole in the center here, it's not gonna, you're gonna have to re-roll it because yeah. it's gonna fall right through. Yeah, because we've, we've tried patching it, but it never works. All right, so now we'll just, Pizza knife works better than a regular cutting knife. We've used a regular cutting knife and it doesn't work, so if you're going to make it, yeah. use a regular pizza cutter. Or a scissor. Okay, so now we have the bottom dough done. It's in the pan and we're going to get ready to make the top. So it's the same process as the bottom. You want to roll it out about an eighth of an inch thick. Alright, so now we have the top of our Easter pie done. So we're just going to set it on a pizza pan. Put it off to the side. Put it off to the side. What we had, uh, we have we have a 12 inch pie pan that we're using, a 12 inch deep dish. Uh, so we're gonna use 12 ounces of pepperoni, 16 ounces of provolone cheese, and we're just gonna start with seven eggs. 
Uh, sometimes, you know, seven is good. Sometimes it's a little too much. Sometimes not enough. Uh, you just got to be careful with the eggs. That's the trick because too much egg and it the explodes. pie is really good. Yeah, it's going to rise and explode. So what I'm doing is... My mother always complains, says, you know, you got to make sure you get the cheese and the meat somehow mixed together. And that's, that's, that's kind of a trick. Yeah. And I continue to get my cardio in. The idea is like when you, when you put the filling into the pie crust, yeah, you like to get every, like the meat evenly distributed so that everybody, you know, nobody complains. They didn't get any pepperoni in their slice. And you know, sometimes, like we, we make a smaller pie instead of using the 12 inch pan or the, the 12 inch round pan or 13 inch rectangular. Uh, we use an 8 inch diameter uh, baking pan. And if you do that, you know, you, you just cut the ingredients in half. You know, use like six, inch, uh, six, six ounces of pepperoni, you know, eight ounces of cheese, three or four eggs. Once in a while, what we like to do is, uh, you know, we, we, we put a sausage in there. Like if you want to put a sausage or two and you slice it, take it out of the casing, just brown it up, and then as you're mixing the filling, just, just chop the sausage meat up and just add it in with the cheese and pepperoni. Gives it a little bit of zing if you use a hot Italian sausage. It really mm -hmm. gives it a lot of flavor. That extra spice makes it taste really good. There's no right or wrong way. Right. Mm -hmm. Although we've, we've made a lot of wrong wrong ways. Uh. As long as it tastes good. That's right. Yeah. So we just, just, just kind of mix it up, get it, you know, try to get it distributed. The egg yeah. mixture, the pepperoni and provolone mixture, now we're ready to mix both mixtures together. All right. And we're just going to... Put it into that seven eggs. And this is Italian cooking. You're always allowed to use your hands. And we're just gonna kind of get it really mixed up well. You want the pepperoni, you want the cheese, everything covered in egg. So then it cooks better, it tastes better. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's a nice, dough that Frankie made for us. All right, and... Okay. We're taking a scoop at a time of yeah. the mixture on into the dough. It's just easier than pouring the whole thing in because if you want, like as you can see, my dad's spreading it out. If you put it all in and you try to spread it out on dough, it's harder, you can get a hole in the dough and then so doing it, you know, step by, like scoop by scoop, it's a little bit more time consuming, but in the end, it'll make a better looking pie, a better tasting pie. So that extra step is definitely worth it. Now you can cheat and pour it in, because it's like the very end. So now this is the inside of the pie. So everything is even. We have a good distribution of meat and cheese. The dough feels good. Okay. All right, we're gonna get the top on right. of the pie. This is where it takes two, two people to do it. Okay, so now we have the pie and the mixture is in. So now we're going to put the top on. You need two sets of hands for the top so that it gets perfect. Okay, see how it's nice and it covers. And yeah, first we'll trim trim the excess dough. Okay, again, using a pizza cutter. Yeah. Definitely recommend a pizza cutter. You don't get, you get a nice smooth cut. Okay, so now that we have the dough trimmed, trimmed we're going to crimp the edges. Let me just use a fork. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the Okay, flatten it, you get better results. This was recommended by my cousin to crimp the end edges with a fork. All right, so now we're gonna poke some air holes in it. Just makes it cook better. And 
keep the pie from exploding. We've had that before. We, we've, we've had that, yes. Still tastes good, but you don't want your pie to explode. Okay. And we, we mixed up some egg and we're just gonna... Brush the top. Brush the top with a wash. Give it a nice... Uh, Gives it a nice golden, golden look. The way you guys are painting, it looks like you painted a house before, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got some work if you guys are interested after okay. we're done. I got the oven heated on 425. We're going to stick it in the oven on 425 for 45 minutes. Keep your eye on it because some ovens are more powerful than others and might cook sooner. Just you keep your eye on it, and when the dough looks really nice and rise, it's, it's just like cooking a cake. You know, you just stick a fork in it. Stick a fork in it. But what we also do when we when we throw it in the oven, um, we put it on the bottom rack for like say 22, 23 minutes. Then we switch the rack to the right. top rack. And then we move it all the way to the top rack. Why do that? Oh, because we want to. You know, because the heat is different in the oven, so this way you get the bottom and the top to cook evenly. It does taste better when you switch the, the You rice. know, the heat rises, so you get you get the bottom, you know, this way you make sure the bottom of the pie is cooked. I'm going to throw this in the oven. We'll be back. We're going to have Gina tell you all about her work that she does with photography and another tradition here on Cooking with Frankie Meeple. Hang tight, and we'll be right back on Cooking with Frankie Meatball. So I brought some of my work to share with you. Uh, like I said, I'm not only a landscape photographer. I can take pictures of anything. So last summer I just decided to take out a you know, can of bubbles, jar of bubbles, whatever, and blow bubbles and take pictures of them and see what I get. Um, so it was kind of frustrating to take these, but I feel the more unique your pictures are, the more people will remember or be drawn to see more of your work. Um, I went to Niagara Falls a few years ago, took some pictures, so when I go on vacation, I'm always taking pictures. But this back. is the little castle near, or it's on Hearts Islands in the Thousand Islands, Bolt Castle. I recommend going there. Continuing in the Thousand Islands, we took a, a boat tour looking at all the houses in the Thousand Islands. So this was taken from a boat going under the Thousand Islands Bridge, and it was not foggy when I took the picture, but I played around in Lightroom and made it look like I was taking this early in the morning. The Delaware Water Gap, this is Mount Tatami. If you look closely, you can see there's an Indian head. It's the side profile of an Indian, his, his eyes, his nose and this was taken in May of last year. But this picture has an interesting story behind it. I had some pictures posted of Mount Airy Casino Resort. Um, always going there to, to photograph the swans, the lake. My cousin and I go there for Starbucks. Um, so I had some pictures posted of Mount Airy and the pro golfer at the golf course contacted me on Instagram and said, hey, I like your pictures. Would you be interested in coming to the golf course and taking some pictures of the golf course? I'll give you a golf cart and free reign of the golf course. So I was like, yeah. And you can check out my Instagram page at Gina.Matarazzo or my Etsy store. I have um, a bunch of different prints for sale. I have digital prints, uh, regular you can prints where you can get sizes. I have photo gifts. Like, pillows and tote bags. I try to put my work on everything. Um, that's Photography by Gina M. And you can check out my, my blog and my website at ginamatarazzophotos.com. All right, I think that pie is done. What do you say? Well, it's been cooling for a while, so I think it's I think it's, it's time to dig in. I think so. Okay. I'm ready. All right. You guys ready? We're ready. We'll be right back with the real pizza pie. Hey, it's Timmy Talk from Worst Cooks in America, Season 14. Hi guys, it's Cameron from Season 15 of Food Network's Worst Cooks in America, and you are watching Cooking with Frankie Meatball. Alright, so now our pie is done. Um, it didn't take the full 45 minutes, so... Uh, no, I was going to say, because we, we, we live in a high elevation, 2000. And we, we don't have a gas oven, but over here it was a gas oven, and we're kind of like down to sea level. And this cooked a little over 40 minutes, and again, 
you know, we, we cook it on the bottom rack for half the time and then we move it to the top rack this way. The top and the bottom of the pie, uh, you know, they get evenly browned and uh, well now comes the moment of truth. We're gonna try to, we're gonna like try to flip it out of the pan. Okay, it came out of the pan. You can see the bottom is nice and golden. Okay, it's nice and soft in the center. The edges are a little bit harder. Now we're gonna flip it again. Flip it again. And take it out of the oven. You gotta let it cool for a while this way. You know, just like, you know, if you were cutting a cake, you wanna let it cool a bit so this way when you cut it, it doesn't like all fall apart. And here we go. See, so if you look at the inside, the layers, it was evenly distributed when we poured it in. So it does make a difference. If you look nice and cheesy. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's some uh, that's some pie action over here. An appreciation for these guys come all the way from the Poconos. I'd like to have a give you a nice little uh, Frankie Meatball oh. picture. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. It's all about family traditions, guys. Again, check out this pie. Look at this. Huh? You got the pie here. Look at that. Like Pac-Man. See Pac-Man? Look at Pac-Man. Get the layers evenly distributed. Look at that pie. That is amazing. Huh? Traditions. Family traditions. This is probably the best story that I have heard yet. It's the first one, but you know what? The first one's always the best one. Guys, you heard the story. You see the recipe. You've seen the final product. Check out Gina's webpage. Get some of that artwork. Her shots are beautiful. Let me tell you, guys. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram. Like us on Facebook. I'm telling you guys, leave a comment. Okay? Leave a comment. Let these guys know what you think of their family tradition. Chenzi, it's all yours. If you like what you so much, you like and subscribe. Turn on that bell notification so you get notified when a new video comes out.